In this lecture, we will study about drug metabolism definition, why metabolism is necessary for drugs, drugs metabolism in its pharmacological activity, and sites of metabolism on organ basis and cellular basis, and it lost enzyme classification based on site. Well, metabolism or by transformation of drugs is a pharmacokinetic property and a major mechanism of drug elimination which can be defined as it is the chemical alteration of drugs inside the body consisting of anabolic and catabolic reactions which are fulfilled with enzymatic conversion of one form of a drug to another which involves the same enzymatic pathways that are utilized for normal metabolism of dietary constituents in endogenous substances. Every day, we come in contact through exposure to environmental contaminants as well as in our diets with a lot of foreign chemicals or xenobiotics, means substances foreign to the body which include carcinogens, pesticides, toxins, and drugs, in which drugs are special case of such xenobiotics. We have evolved complex systems that detoxify these xenobiotics so they do not cause harm, in which metabolism is one of the main pathways through which xenobiotics are detoxified. Metabolism is carried out by a large number of diverse enzymes that apparently only function to metabolize foreign chemicals. These enzymes that metabolize xenobiotics, called xenobiotic or drug metabolizing enzymes. Why metabolism is necessary for drugs? In order to be reachable to cells and reach their sites of action, Drugs generally must be hydrophobic, mean lipophilic. This property of the drugs allows the drug to penetrate into different compartments of the body by passing through biological membranes of the cells and reach its sites of action. Thus, mostly pharmacologically active organic molecules tends to be lipophilic and remain unionized or only partially ionized at physiologic pH, which are readily reabsorbed in the excretory organs back to the blood. Since, in the absence of metabolism, they would accumulate in the body and would have a prolonged duration of action, the xenobiotic metabolizing enzymes convert drugs into compounds that are hydrophilic derivatives that are more easily eliminated through the excretory organs. Thus, the process of drug metabolism that leads to elimination plays a major role in diminishing the biological activity of a drug. The hydrophobic property is necessary for drugs which needs to be absorbed before reaching the site of action like drugs used orally, topically, or through any other route for systemic effects, except parenterally. Besides this, some drugs are little biotransformed and largely excreted unchanged. They are usually hydrophilic from past and mostly used parenterally to avoid absorption problems, for example, neustigmine. Metabolism of drugs leads to inactive or active metabolites of the product in which the first one is drugs inactivation. Most drugs and their active metabolites are metabolized to inactive or less active in more ionized forms, for example, ibuprofen, paracetamol, propranolol and its active metabolite for hydroxypropranolol. Second one is active metabolite formation by another active drug. 
many drugs have been found to be converted to equally or more active metabolite. For example, digitoxin converts to digoxin and codeine to morphine inside the body. Third one is activation of inactive drugs. It is also known as bioactivation. Few drugs are inactive as such in need conversion in the body to one or more active metabolites. Such a drug called a prodrug, for example, enolifril is converted to enolifrilate and leudopa to dopamine inside the body. With this, the last one is metabolism may lead to toxification. Certain chemicals lead to highly reactive toxic and carcinogenic metabolites. This occurs when an unstable intermediate is formed that has reactivity toward other compounds found in the cell, for example, chemicals in tobacco smoke. And for this purpose, drugs are extensively tested during developmental stages to avoid toxification in humans. Sites of metabolism Although drug metabolism occurs in almost all tissues, the sites responsible for the metabolism of a large number of drugs due to the presence of drug metabolizing enzymes in these organs, in which number first is the liver. Liver is the major site because of its strategic place in the portal circulation and its many metabolic enzymes like CYPP or Pepti enzymes. The liver is considered the major metabolic clearing house for both endogenous chemicals like cholesterol and hormones and most of the xenobiotics. Second major metabolic site for drug is GIT. Drug metabolism also can occur in other parts of GIT but the small intestine plays a central role in drug metabolism. The high concentration of xenobiotic metabolizing enzymes is in the epithelial cells of the GI tract, which are responsible for drug metabolism. Other organs like kidneys, lungs, and brain also metabolize significant concentration of some drugs. After this, Cellular sites of drug metabolizing enzymes at the subcellular level. These enzymes may be located in the endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, cytosol, lysosomes, or even in the nuclear envelope or plasma membrane. Enzymes are divided into two types microsomal enzymes and non microsomal enzymes based on subcellular site. Microsomal enzymes are located on smooth endoplasmic reticulum, abundant in liver, also in kidney, intestinal mucosa, and lungs. The monooxygenase enzymes, cytochrome P450 enzymes, glucuronosyl transferase enzymes, epoxide hydrolase enzymes, and some other enzymes are microsomal enzymes. They catalyze most of the oxidations, reductions, hydrolysis, and glucuronide conjugation reactions. The next subtype is non-microsomal enzymes. These enzymes are present in the cytoplasm in mitochondria of hepatic cells as well as in other tissues including plasma of our blood. The esterases, amidases, some pleoprotein oxidases and most conjugases are non-microsomal. 
reactions catalyzed or some oxidations and reductions many hydrolytic reactions in all conjugations except glucuronidation drug metabolic reactions are divided into two categories phase 1 and phase 2 we will discuss these topics in next lecture and with this thanks for watching our video and support us by subscribing our channel